Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Grade 11 Functions class. This is 4.5 and 4.6, Graphs of Exponential Functions. So an exponential function is basically anything where we have a positive number base. So this b represents a positive number. It can only be positive, can't be negative. Um, and then there is a x variable in the exponent. So variable exponent. That makes the exponential graph. It has a few characteristics. If you always have a positive base, we always know that, um, first of all, the domain is always going to be x and r because it could be any number. You could put any number into the exponent and you'd end up getting a number. And the range has to be y and r such that y is greater than zero. That's because you can never have a positive number multiplied by itself any number of times to get a negative number, nor can you multiply it by itself any number of times to get zero. So y has to be greater than zero. Additionally, you know that you have to have a y-intercept of 1 because any number to the 0 is 1. So we always go through the point 0, 1. Okay, so those are some of the basic characteristics of the exponential function, no matter what the base is. And we can also perform transformations on that. So if you see y equals af of kx minus d plus c, that's the transformation of any function. And if we just replace the f with b, you can see that this becomes y equals a b to the, and then you replace the x with whatever is on the inside of the function notation, b to the kx minus d, and then plus c is on the outside, and that is what our transformations are going to look like. You can see I've written it right here. Okay, so let's practice drawing those transformations. Oh, first let's look at one of the major bases that we're going to be using, y equals 2 to the x. Um, so if we just use a table of values, you could draw it. So any uh, base that you have, you can draw with the table of values. And we're going to actually be doing an investigation in class to look at some of the other bases that we might be using. Um, so you can see, again, it has this y-intercept of 1, and it goes through 1, 2, um, 2, 4, 3, 8 and also goes through negative one a half. It has the same domain x and r and the same range y and r such that y is greater than zero. Okay, so you can use any number and when you have a number in there, so this is our b is equal to two, um, you can just draw it in. And when you draw it in, make sure that you also, you know, you label it y equals two to the x and you also have to label the horizontal asymptote. In this case, it's y equals zero because we can never touch zero, we're always approaching it, but never touching it. If it is on the axis, you don't have to draw it in, but you do have to label it, so make sure that you label your horizontal asymptote every time. All right, let's do some sketching. So y equals negative 2 to the 3x, uh, sorry, <laughs> negative 2 times 3 to the x minus 4. Um, so we're going to be graphing this one. You can see that our base here is 3, so we need a parent function of 3 to the x. The 3 is not the the uh, stretch, so be careful about that. Make sure you differentiate between the base and the stretch, the vertical stretch. You can see here that this negative 2 is on out in the front, so that is the vertical dilation. And x minus 4, you can see minus 4 is going to be our horizontal shift, so we're going to do a vertical flip. We're going to do a vertical stretch by 2. And we're also going to move to the right four. And I'm just going to do it in three steps. We already drew, drew the parent function here as the first step. And we're going to do the vertical dilations as the second step. And then I'm going to do my um, translation as my third step. So make sure you label y equals 3 to the x. And I'm going to label my horizontal asymptote as well. And you can just put some major points in there, like uh, one. 3, 9, and I got a third here. Okay, and you can see it really hugs that asymptote in the drawing. Okay, so um, I'm going to do vertical flip and vertical stretch by 2. Of course, it's the same as before. We're just going to take the y values, oops, and we're going to multiply them by negative 2. So this is a 1. It's going to go to negative 2. It stays in the same x place, right? It, the x is not going to change since it's a vertical um, transformation. And then this 3 goes to negative 6, and this neg this 9 would go to negative 18, but I can't because that's way down in the graph, so I'll just skip it. But this third goes to negative 2 thirds, just draw that in. 
Okay, and you just want to very carefully draw it. It's hard to draw on the computer because of lag, but I'll just try my best. And you just want to try not to wiggle it too much and go up and down. And then just hug that horizontal asymptote and draw an arrow. And then we're going to just try to get through here, take a break if you need to. And the more you draw, the better off you are. You'll get better and better. So this is y equals negative 2 times 3 to the x, because that's the transformation that I performed. And I'm going to do the right 4. Actually, I'm going to do it in green. Um, so in it, again, if you have colors, that's way better for you. Um, it'll just be easier for you to, to differentiate between your points, or your graphs. And uh, I'm just going to draw these significant points in again. And so I'm going to take all of these points from this black graph, and I'm going to move them right 4. So just go over 4, 1, 2. Oh, go to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4. Make sure you're going the right direction the right direction. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and then one, two, three, four. Connect your dots in a curvy and attractive manner. And by the way, you don't want to just stop here in the middle of the graph. So you're not just connecting these dots. You also want to make sure that you're filling it in into the whole um, into the whole grid. So I'm gonna just try to draw all the way from out here. It's gonna be really hard because it's really hard to draw these lines. Um, you know, do your best, and that's okay. All right, there you go. So y equals negative two um, times three to the x minus four, and there you go. Okay. Next one, four to the negative two x minus four plus three. Before you do it, you'll notice that this is not factored, and you do need to factor it. So we're going to put y equals four to the negative two times x plus two plus 3. You can see there's no a, but the parent function is 4 to the x, and that's what's drawn here. So this is 4 to the x, y equals 4 to the x, and don't forget to label your horizontal asymptote as well. And so we've got a horizontal flip, whoop, horizontal compression by 1 half. We're going to go left 2, and we're going to go up 3. <coughs> So again, I'm going to do my dilations together, and in this case, I'm going to take my two um, translations. I'm going to do them together, so I'm going to end up with three graphs on there. So horizontal flip and compression by half, same thing. We're going to just take the all the x values, and we're going to multiply them by negative one half. So this is at one, so negative one, so it's going to go to positive one half right there. Zero times a negative half is zero. Um, one times negative half goes to there, and this one's 2 times negative half. There you go, and you can just try to connect the dots in a curvy and attractive manner. Uh, this is really hard on the computer, but just... <laughs> so forgive me for my wiggly lines. I'm just going to try to hug the asymptote without going under. Okay, and draw your arrows. So this is y equals... 4 to the negative 2x. And then we're going to go left 2 and up 3. So take all the significant points. You can just make them a little bit darker if you like. Oh, <laughs> there's one right there. And there should be one here and here. I'm just going to move them around. So I'll take it, go left 2, 1, 2, and up 3. Left 2, 1, 2, and up 3. Left 2, 1, 2, and up three, and obviously this one I can't get to. Now the really important thing though is if you have a translation vertically, you're going to have to worry about the asymptote. So this is the only thing that affects the vertical, or sorry, the horizontal asymptote. So because I have a up three here, I know my horizontal asymptote is going to be at, um, it's going to be at, oops, I had drawn that wrong, uh, y equals three, so I'm going to sketch that in there, and you wanted to use a dotty line because it is um, it is not actually part of the graph. And we'll label it, and then we can just draw our graph. And you just you don't want to touch this line because we know that it intersects it somewhere up here. So just extend it all the way through your whole grid. Try to connect your dots in a curvy and attractive manner. Hug that asymptote, and label it. Uh, y equals 4 to the negative 2, x plus 2, plus 3. And there you go. 
All right, last one for our transformations. 3 over 4 to the negative 2x minus 4 minus 1. This might look a little complicated, but we're going to simplify it first, and then we're going to graph it, okay? So this is actually equal to 3 times 1 over 4, and then I'm just going to factor that right there, because I don't like it when it's not factored. It's going to mislead us and make it wrong. And if you remember, if I have 1 over, that means it's to the negative 1. So I really have 4 to the negative 2 times x plus 2 to the negative 1, minus 1. And using our power rule, 2x plus 2 minus 1. Now you can see our transformations really easily. We've got a vertical stretch. Oop, a little lag there. By 3. Horizontal compression by one half. We've got to go left two, and we're going down one. So this down one tells you what the asymptote is, right? All right. So I'm going to use a little bit of movie magic. Oh, we've got this um, parent function. We're going to just group these transformations. So I'm going to do my vertical dilation, then my horizontal dilation, then my translations together. So this is going to be at four steps in total. I've got my original y equals... <coughs> oops, sorry. I'm just going to pop it up there. y equals um, 4 to the x. That's our parent function. And I'm going to label my horizontal asymptote right here. y equals 0. And uh, I've got my major points um, in there, and I'm going to do a vertical stretch by 3. So all of these um, points, I've taken them and I've just multiplied the y value by 3. So this becomes, well, this is 1, and now it's 3. This was at 4, and now it's at 12. So we're just going to, again, label the graph. And if you have difficulty, you could just use arrows if you don't have the space. 3 times 4 to the x. And then we're going to do horizontal compression by 1 half. Okay, so now you can see that I've got my horizontal compression by half. So I take all the um, black points here and I've divided them by um, 2 so that our x values are divided by 2. So this 1 12 has moved to a half 12. This negative, a ha a negative 1 has moved to a negative a half. And uh, so We've got our horizontal compression. I'm just going to label that as well. I'll use a, maybe I'll use a blue in order to do that. And we'll just label that in. So this is y equals 3 times 4 to the 2x. And then we've just got one more set of transformations. We're going to move left 2 and down 1. Okay, so here we go. We've got our final transformation. We've moved down 1 and left 2, so I've taken all of those points, and i just moved them um, on the blue one, and I've moved them over 2 and down 1. So I'll just uh, draw these on there. So this one, this blue one, has moved over 2 and down 1 right there. And um, we also need to label our asymptote. And you just want to, again, draw it in a nice sketchy line and label it y equals negative 1 and label our whole graph y equals 3 times 4 to the 2 x plus 2 minus 1 and there you go so that is all for our sketching um, there is another couple of examples in part two. This is the end of part one. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.